Today's lesson is on ratios and proportions. Take a minute to read over the learning goal and scale. Find where you are on the scale before we begin the lesson. We write ratios to compare two quantities. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. You can write the ratio of two numbers, a and b, where b is not equal to zero in three ways. In fraction form, with a colon, and with the word two between them. In every single one of these, they are read a to b. We usually express a and b in the same unit, and we always write the ratio in simplest form. Let's use a ratio to compare the lengths of a toy car and a real car. The ratio of the length of the toy car to the length of the real car is 42 inches to 192 inches because we have converted 16 feet into inches. In simplest form, that ratio would be written 7 to 32. Again, we can write it in fraction form with a colon or with the word 2. Each one of these reads 7 to 32. In example 1, we will write a ratio. The bonsai bald cypress tree is a small version of the full-size tree. The Florida bald cypress tree, called the senator, stands 118 feet tall. What is the ratio of the height of the bonsai to the height of the senator? Here, the height of the bonsai is 15 inches. Since the question asks us to write the ratio of the height of the bonsai to the height of the senator, we're going to write the bonsai's height first and the senator's height second. The height of the bonsai is 15 inches and the height of the senator is 118 feet. Since the units are not the same, we are going to convert feet into inches. Since there are 12 inches in a foot, there are 1,416 inches in 118 feet. Now that our ratio is in the same units, let's simplify by dividing the numerator and the denominator by 3. So the ratio of the bonsai to the senator in simplest form is 5 to 472. Pause the video and do you try number 1. The bonsai is 18 inches wide and stands 2 feet tall. What is the ratio of the width of the bonsai to its height? Since the bonsai is 18 inches wide and 2 feet tall, we will start with the ratio 18 inches to 2 feet. We now need to convert 2 feet into inches. Since there are 12 inches in a foot, there are 24 inches in 2 feet. Now that we have our ratio, let's simplify it by dividing the numerator and denominator by 6. The ratio of the width of the bonsai to the height of the bonsai is 3 to 4. In example 2, we will divide a quantity into a given ratio. Members of the school band are buying pots of tulips and pots of daffodils to sell at their fundraiser. They plan to buy 120 pots of flowers. The ratio number of tulip pots to number of daffodil pots will be 2 to 3. How many pots of each type of flower should they buy? Remember in example 1 when we simplified our ratio by dividing the numerator and denominator by the same number. Here, because our numerator and denominator add up to be 5 and we want 120 pots, we need to unsimplify, if you will, our ratio so that when we add the numerator to the denominator, we will get 120 pots of flowers. Since we don't know what that number is, let's use x as our variable to represent the number we will multiply our numerator and denominator by. Since we want the sum of the pots of tulips to pots of daffodils to be 120, let's add our numerator 2x to our denominator 3x and set it equal to 120. Now let's solve for x. 2x plus 3x equals 5x and that will equal 120. Divide both sides by 5 and x equals 24. Since x equals 24, the number of tulip pots will be 2 times 24 and the number of daffodil pots will be 3 times 24. So there will be 48 tulip pots and 72 daffodil pots. To check, let's add 48 to 72, and since we get 120 pots, we know that we are correct. Pause the video and do you try number 2. The measure of two supplementary angles are in the ratio 1 to 4. What are the measures of the angles? 
Remember, supplementary means it has a sum of 180. Since 1 plus 4 equals 5, we know we want to multiply each number, 1 and 4, by the same value. Let's use x. So we will add 1x and 4x, and that should equal 180. Now let's add the two together. 5x will equal 180. Divide both sides by 5, and x equals 36. The smaller angle will be 1 times 36, or 36, and the larger angle will be 4 times 36, 144. So our two angles are 36 degrees and 144 degrees. To double check your work, go ahead and add 36 to 144, and since we get 180, we know we are correct. An extended ratio compares three or more numbers. In the extended ratio A to B to C, there are really three ratios. The ratio of the first two numbers, A to B, the ratio of the last two numbers, B to C, and the ratio of the first and last numbers, A to C. In example three, we will use an extended ratio. The lengths of the sides of a triangle are in the extended ratio three to five to six. The perimeter of the triangle is 98 inches. What is the length of the longest side of the triangle? Remember, to find perimeter, you add the lengths of the sides. Since 3 plus 5 plus 6 does not equal 98, we know that we want to multiply each of those side lengths, our simplified side lengths, by the same value, and again, we will use x. Now let's solve for x so we can find the length of the longest side of our triangle. We'll combine like terms to get 14x equals 98. Divide both sides by 14, and x equals 7. Since our longest side is 6x, we will multiply 6 times 7 for 42. So the longest side of our triangle is 42 inches. Let's do a real quick check. Since 3 times 7 is 21, and 5 times 7 is 35, and we know 6 times 7 is 42, if we add these three numbers, we should get 98. Since we do, we know we are correct. Pause the video and do you try number three. The lengths of the sides of a triangle are in the extended ratio four to seven to nine. The perimeter of the triangle is 60 centimeters. What are the lengths of the sides? Let's start with our equation of four x plus seven x plus nine x equals 60. Go ahead and combine like terms and 20x will equal 60. Divide both sides by 20, and x will equal 3. Since we are looking for the length of all three sides, we're going to multiply 3 by each number in the ratio. So 4 times 3 gives us a length of 12 centimeters. 7 times 3 gives us a length of 21 centimeters, and 9 times 3 gives us a length of 27 centimeters. Now to check, add the three lengths up. Since all of them have a value, a sum of 60 centimeters, we know we are correct. If two ratios are equivalent, we can write an equation stating the ratios are equal. If the equation contains a variable, we can solve the equation to find the value of the variable. An equation that states two ratios are equal is called a proportion. The first and last number are the extremes, and the middle two numbers are the means. When we use the cross product property, we multiply the extremes and we multiply the means. These two products are equal. So here, if you see the ratio 2 to 3 is equal to 4 to 6, when we multiply 2 times 6 and get 12, it will equal the product of 3 and 4, which is also 12. In example 4, we will solve proportions. What is the solution of each proportion? In part A, let's use the cross product property to multiply the extremes, 6 times 4, and set that equal to the product of the means, x times 5. So 24 will equal 5x. Divide both sides by 5, and 24 over 5 will equal x. To check, let's plug in 24 over 5 for x and make sure that our equation is correct. Since 24 over 5 times 5 
does equal 24, then we know we are correct. In part B, again, we'll use the cross products property to start by multiplying the extremes y plus 4 times 3 and setting that equal to the product of the means 9 times y. Use distributive property, 3 times y is 3y, and 3 times 4 is 12, equals 9y. Subtract 3y from both sides, and 12 equals 6y. Now divide both sides by 6, and 2 equals y. To check, let's substitute 2 in for y. So up here, 2 plus 4 equals 6, times 3 is 18, and 9 times 2 is also 18, so we know we are correct. Pause the video and do you try number 4. For part A, let's use cross products again. 9 times 14 will equal 2 times A. 126 equals 2A, divide both sides by 2, and 63 equals A. To check, substitute 63 in for A. Six 126 equals 126, we know we are correct. In part B, again, use cross products property. So 15 times M will equal M plus 1 times 3. 15M equals 3M plus 3. Subtract 3M from both sides, and 12M equals 3. Divide both sides by 12, and M equals 1 fourth. To check your answer, substitute 1 fourth in for M, and make sure that your cross products are equivalent. Using the properties of equality, we can rewrite proportions in equivalent forms. Go ahead and take a minute to look at the different properties here of proportions. To make sure you are comparing the same parts, keep them in the same ratio or in the same position of each ratio. If I want to compare my height and weight to Princess Leia's height and weight, here are some different ways I could set up the proportion. Notice that no matter which way I choose to write the proportion, in every single one of them, when using the cross product property, I am multiplying my height and Leia's weight and setting that equal to my weight and Leia's height. In example 5, we will write equivalent proportions. In the diagram, x to 6 equals y to 7. What ratio completes the equivalent proportion x to y equals and justify your answer. Since our new ratio starts with the comparison of the numerators x to y, our second ratio will start with the comparison of the denominators 6 to 7. This comes from our second property of proportions where we switch the means. Pause the video and do you try number 5. For parts a and b use the proportion x to 6 equals y to 7 what ratio completes the equivalent proportion, and justify your answer. Here, in part A, we just reciprocated x to 6 to get 6 to x, so we need to reciprocate y to 7 for 7 over y. And that is our first property of proportions. In part B, we have added the denominator to our numerator for y plus 7 over 7, so we need to add the, numer the denominator of our first ratio to the numerator of our first ratio to give us x plus 6 over 6, and that is our third property of proportions. For part c, explain why the ratio 6 to x minus 6 is equal to 7 to y minus 7 is equivalent to the proportion x to 6 equals y to 7. Let's start by taking the first property of proportions and just reciprocating this proportion. Now let's take the third property of proportions and add the denominator to the numerator in each side of the proportion. When we simplify this proportion, negative 6 and positive 6 is 0, so we are left with x to 6, and negative 7 plus 7 is 0, so we are left with y to 7 on the right. That is why this proportion is equivalent to this proportion. Now is your chance to see how well you understand the lesson. Pause the video and do the lesson check. Don't forget to check your answers on the next slide. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask in class. If you really understand the lesson, go ahead and try the challenge. How'd you do? Did you figure it out? Now take another minute to reread the learning goal on the scale. Have you climbed any higher than where you were when we began the lesson?